Hi guys, do you have holes like this in your wall? What about like this? Today my goal is to simplify it for you and show you how easy it is to do by yourself. So here's what you're going to need. Drywall screws. These are the ones that I'm using. A drill. A drywall saw. One of these, it's a utility knife. Drywall tape, there's two different kinds. This one is self-adhering and this one is paper. Today we're gonna to be using the paper one because it's stronger and it's just all around better, but if you wanna use this one, go ahead. A piece of wood a little bit larger than your hole. A piece of drywall, a putty knife, and a sanding block. And of course, you're going to need some sheetrock. This is sheetrock 90, drywall compound. Before we get started, I just quickly wanted to go over the two types of drywall compound that are commonly used. The first would be Sheetrock 90. This is used to finish drywall seams. It takes longer to dry, but it's easier to sand. The second is drywall spackling. This is used to fill small holes. It's quick drying and harder to sand. But you can intermix the two if you'd like, but for instance, when we're doing a really big hole, we don't want something that's really hard to sand, so we wouldn't really want to use the spackling. And when we're filling a small hole, we want something that's quick and easy to use that we can quickly paint over it fast. So in that case, you'd want to use something like spackling. So we're going to take our drywall piece and we're going to hold it up to our hole about there and then probably about there. And we're going to score all the way down this line. So now that we've scored it, you can just flip it over and just push it and it should just break like that. Now I'm just going to cut down the back side. Now I'm going to do the same thing here, just scoring down breaking it so this is the piece of drywall that we are left with we are going to for ease cut out a square out of this there is a two by four right here so we're going to want to stick on this side of that two by four you're going to trace it i've actually decided because there's kind of a lot of space here i'm just going to make the drywall piece a little bit smaller okay so that's better so this is our new piece so there we go. Because we need something for this piece of drywall to stick to so it doesn't just like fall out, um, we're gonna have to put a piece of wood in here because there is no stud right here. Have this piece of wood. You're gonna wanna make sure it's a little bit bigger than your hole so you can see it overhangs on the top and it overhangs on the bottom. You're gonna line it up right with that line and then you're going to want to hit the back of it So I bet you are wondering how we are going to put this in here and also hold it at the same time. It's going to be difficult, but there is a trick. You're going to take your piece of wood, you're going to put it beside your hole, and you're going to have a little bit of overhang on the top, a little bit of overhang on the bottom, and then you're going to put a line on the piece of wood, so about there, and then about there. You're going to take one of our screws and our screw gun, and we're going to screw in a nail just a little bit and that's what you're going to use to hold on to your piece of wood magic so i'm going to take some of my drywall screws and i'm going to start them off in the wall because it's there's too many things to hold you can't hold the drill hold the piece of wood and hold your screws so i'm just going to start off my screws then we are going to take our piece of wood put it inside and then so you see how we have that line we want to line up those lines. Then we can go ahead and screw in these screws. You want to make sure your screws are just slightly countersunk so that it's easier to fill them. Now you can go ahead and take out this screw. Take that piece of drywall that you cut and you're going to put it right inside. Probably two screws. We'll do one at the top, one at the bottom just to hold it properly. So now you want to take your tape. Our tape is going to go right here. So I'm going to say about there is probably good. So this is how much sheetrock I've taken. I'm actually patching a bunch of holes in the house today. You're going to add your water into this. And as you're doing that, be aware you want the consistency of a thick peanut butter. Now it's always easier to add water, but it's very hard to take water away. So you're going to coat the entire piece of tape and then you're just going to use the edge of your little spatula to get it up off the wall like so. Then you're going to place it right on top of that corner and then you're going to apply pressure down on it so that it sticks to the wall. Then you can go ahead and scrape off the excess mud on this side of the wall. Grab your next piece, do the same thing. Now you want to take a little bit of mud on your spatula and you want to go over it and smooth this out as best as you can.
So if I were going down here, I'd be putting more pressure on this side to feather it out. So this is first coat. You won't get it perfectly smooth, but next coat you will. Now that it's dry, we're gonna go in with our sanding block. We're just gonna give it a really nice light sand. So I've gone ahead and mixed our second coat. You can tell that it's a little bit thinner, a little bit smoother. It's more like a pudding kind of consistency. The reason why this has become such a big patch when we first started with a small hole was because there was a lot of imperfections in this area, especially down here, just like uneven parts of the wall. So I just decided to, at the same time, take care of all of that. But normally if you were just doing a small hole like that, it wouldn't end up this big. So now we are going to take our sanding block again and we are going to start sanding. This time we're going to sand with a little bit more purpose. So we're really gonna try to get rid of this line. For our third coat, it's the same texture as our second coat. And we are just going to coat basically this whole thing. This is gonna be our finishing coat. Okay, so since that was the finishing coat, we have to really make sure that we sand these off, blend in the, the, the edges, and really just like make this smooth. So you wanna make sure this is completely dry before you put your coat of primer on it. You need to primer it before you're gonna put your final coat on it. And the danger of painting it while it's still wet is it could peel off. You don't want that to happen. Smaller holes like this are really super duper easy. You just wanna take your finger over and make sure that any of the paint is kind of stuck in. So I'm just pressing it in here. Uh, then you're going to go with some of your spackling and just take it on the corner of your little spatula thing. It's really good if you have like a big one to just take it on the corner. You're going to place that in any of the excess you're going to scrape away. You might have to scrape it away twice. This stuff is amazing. It dries white when it's ready to be painted. So I just went ahead and used a paint that I had that was a paint and primer in one. I'm going to be painting my entire bedrooms a whole new color. So this doesn't really matter what color it was. Hopefully it was inspiring for you guys to watch me do it. You don't have to be a contractor to do those like simple little things. I hope that this helped you guys and as always I'll see you in my next video. Bye!